Hi everybody, hey, this is Ryan Connors from Custom Fitness, Licensed Physical Therapist. Here we go, segment number 10 for the daily maintenance program. And what we're gonna do is for our segment number nine, we start an introduction of our running series. So what we're, our goal is to debunk a few myths, uh, kind of talk about a few injuries and see how we can improve overall performance, decrease energy, uh, energy, and then obviously improve running economy. So we kind of, uh, we kind of address five basic movements. And again, the reasons why we wanna be able to do this is because one of the biggest myths out there is in order to improve muscular endurance, we need to lift in terms of muscular endurance. So that means that we're lifting three to four sets, 20 repetitions at a very, very light weight. We know that that is not true. What we wanna be able to do is we wanna lift moderately heavy, anywhere between 70 to 80%, greater than six weeks, uh, good, a good, a good scale is anywhere between six to twenty weeks cycle, and then we want to do this between seventy to eight percent of our one rep max. Coach Paul, come and join me again. All right, we, one of the reasons why we want to be able to do this again, once we start improving and increasing weight bearing activity, especially through weightlifting, remember we then re reduce the risk of any bone stress injuries. We increase bone density. We increase stiffness throughout the tendons. We increase our capacity to tolerate higher loads. Overall, coach, what does that do for us? Improve performance. Improve performance. And again, if you're a long distance runner, decreasing 10 seconds, 20 seconds off every minute for every mile that you run, oh man, that is dividends. Dividends at least amounts. It means that you can, you don't have to run as long as you think you should. So again, endurance is, endurance is built through endurance type activities, not through lifting muscular endurance, right? So anything under that 60% threshold coach, what does it do? Nothing. Nothing. Yeah, keep your heart going, but it is absolutely nothing. But remember, training is dependent on a couple of things. Remember, we want to consider your training status, whether you've been training for a long period of time, what part of the season you're in, your injury history. You also want to look at the comfort level and your available equipment. At the end of the day, consistency is key. The longer in duration that you're training, the longer that these benefits will last. All right, so we went over uh, our, our first series. Now, here we go. What we're going to do is, if you're in a gym, and you want to improve your running, here we go. Here's five things that you can do in the gym now, now that things are opening up, that we can get to it. First thing, back squat. Number one, the best movement in the whole wide world. Remember, all we want to be able to do is chest up. You're actually pulling this bar down towards you to create stiffness all the way through this upper uh, uh, cavity right in here. Remember, at the end of the day, hips go back, knees go ahead and go down. And remember, another myth, knees can pass the toes, but remember, you need to lead with the hips going back. Nice and simple. Go ahead and go in, coach. Remember, 70 to 80% is what we're looking at. Anywhere between three to six sets, five to 10 repetitions. Is that a lot, coach? Nope. Not a lot. It's not a lot considering how long you run for. All right, coach. Back squat number one. Number two, go ahead and drop that, coach. Number two is we said that the hinge movement, we went over the, uh, we went over <coughs> using a kettlebell, right? What we love to use is instead of using a bar for a conventional deadlift, we want to use a trap bar, right? Trap bar, literally, depending on how you go, uh, depending on the grip and your stats. Well, remember, the stance is a little bit more narrow. All we're gonna do is try to keep that back nice and straight. We're gonna go ahead and hips go back, and go ahead and come on down. If you don't have a trap bar, you we can use dumbbells, you can do, uh, use kettlebells on each hand, but the trap bar is probably the best, uh, the best way to build that uh, posterior chain strength and to protect your lower back. Correct, coach? Correct. Boom. Sounds good, All right? So the third movement, what we said was the step up. When we did the step up the first time, we said that the leg that is stepping up, that's where the weight's gonna be on this side. We're gonna say, hey, by the way, coach, we're gonna put that in the opposite hand. Remember, you can dictate how hard you wanna go by the weight that you have in your hand and the height of the step. But for now, we're gonna go and start low. So on our first progression, it's the right hand, the right leg. Now it's gonna be the left, the left leg goes up. And then, left, and then we're gonna go left leg comes down. Boom, and goes down. If you notice, that weight is not supported, go ahead, coach. And it's this cross body action that we're looking at. And the other coach is putting his hand out just to create lots of tension all the way through here. And go ahead and come on down. Now, for the first segment, all we did was a weighted reverse lunge. We're gonna now introduce, guess what? We're gonna use a little bit of an elevated elevation. We're gonna say right leg, it's gonna come back to support that. Coach, and go. Boom, and go and come on down. Same thing, we're gonna go contralateral side, and go and come on down. So meaning the leg that is stationary stays, opposite hand is the one with the weight in it. 
All right, and then our last movement, we said the cap raises. So the cap raises, right, we just did it off the floor and we did some weighted. So for this one, we said, hey, by the way, instead of just going straight to weight, we're gonna just do it off an elevated surface. So if you find a stair, all we're gonna do again is just focus on going past the stair. Go ahead, coach. And go in and come on all the way up. Steady, three, two, one, slowly lower yourself down. And this is a little bit of the soft pad, so it's obviously a little bit more difficult. You can use a dowel, you can use a railing to kind of hold yourself up. Remember, you're going, your heels go past the stairs that are going down, and then go in and come on up, coach. Again, we're looking at doing these movements, three to six sets, five to 10 repetitions. And go in and come on down, coach. Now, for the last two segments, we've shown you just two variations of five types of, acti uh, five types of exercises that include the squat, the hinge, the step up, the lunge, and the calf raise. Those are probably the most important, but remember, again, this list is not inclusive of the variety of things that you can do. Not one exercise is going to fix your running, but we know that these exercises in combination will improve your running economy, de decrease your risk of energy, uh, injury, and overall improve performance, right? Now, if you guys are having issues out there with anything, please see someone who uh, seek uh, proper advice. You could come to see us at Custom Fitness, uh, licensed physical therapist, or you can actually see some type of strength coach and a running coach. But at the end of the day, lift heavy and lift often.